In this camp run by the Greek government, people are crowded into containers and makeshift tents while they wait to see what their fate will be. Other EU member states promised to take in 66,000 refugees, but in the past year, barely 7,200 have been granted asylum. Here on Samos, people are waiting to be allowed to go to Athens to finalize their asylum applications. Those who are turned down are deported to Turkey or back to their home countries. جاني رفض مو بس أنا يعني بشكل عام للسوريين كلهم وبالتحديد الأكراد عم يجينا رفض وعطونا رفض إنه نحن لازم إنه منطقة آمنة تركيا نحن تركيا يعني مبين كل هذه الإعلانات وزيفتحوا كتب التاريخ إنه عم تحاربنا ولهلا عم تضرب فينا وتقتل فينا لا ما حد عم يرد علينا يا وأكثر العالم يعني ما في مرض مرضة هون لأنه عم نحس حالنا بسجن سجن مفتوح يعني موت بطيء يعني إنسان ما قالوا حدا بالدنيا يعني جاي هون يموت موت بطيء يعني. And uh, if we, if we go outside, uh, people in here they're also acting like 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 we are not a human. And police they are asking that why you are here go back to camp you cannot walk you cannot buy something you cannot eat something in 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 city. But getting away from the camp is their only distraction going for a walk outside, fishing to supplement their food, or taking their children to the park. The deal is supposed to facilitate family reunification. Samira is Palestinian. She lived in a camp in Syria before fleeing the war. Three of her children are in Europe. ولادي يسندوني ولادي يعني يكملوا لي بقيه اذا بايام بالعمر يعني ما بدي غير اولادي بس يضموني اضم اولادي صار لي سنتين ما شايفه اولادي MSF offers psychological care on Samos You know often people come and they unfortunately develop psychological problems when they've been here a long time so I see a lot of people who are very very depressed because of the state of limbo that their life was in. So there's a lot of people who were very, very traumatized, who have, you know, really horrific experiences that they're describing, you know, having had to like pull, you know, kind of bodies of family members out of, you know, the rubble of their, um, and they really, really need support. MSF puts up the most vulnerable people in hotels. Hassan and his family have been staying in a room for several days now. Next week, they should be able to go to Athens and finalize their asylum applications. <laughs> this morning, Selmusa is going to see Winile, a patient who suffers from MDRTB, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Some of the side effects of the treatment of MDM, of MDR, it uh, damages the hearing. So then that's when we use the sign language to communicate with the, those patients who are of got hearing impairment. Sign language is so interesting, it's not hard. Like Winile, 25% of patients on treatment develop hearing loss or become totally deaf. Patients undergoing treatment in Matsapa Clinic have their hearing checked regularly. MSF is conducting operational research into the length of treatment and the side effects. To reduce patients' social isolation, MSF is breaking new ground and providing sign language lessons. 7,000 new cases of tuberculosis are diagnosed in Swaziland every year. 900 are resistant to treatment. So every time a patient is cured and handed a certificate attesting to their good health, there's a lot to celebrate.
After six years of war, five million Syrians have sought refuge abroad and another six million are displaced within the country, living in camps like this one, close to Atme in the northern province of Idlib. This little boy's injury was not caused by a shell or a weapon. His burns are a consequence of the harsh living conditions in the camp where he now lives. This hospital is the only one in northern Syria providing specialist care for burns. Makeshift heaters used for cooking and keeping warm in tiny tents means accidents are only too common. The hospital's emergency room is open 24-7. There's also an operating room where in 2016 over 4,000 procedures were performed. The most severe rotavirus infections occur primarily in children under the age of five years. There is no specific treatment. Only rehydration and zinc supplements can reduce the severity and length of the infection. Although most deaths are among children in Africa and southern Asia, rotavirus infection is a worldwide phenomenon. This shows that good hygiene practices are not enough to prevent it and that therefore a vaccine is necessary to stop hundreds of children from dying every day. There are currently two vaccines that protect children against rotavirus, but not all children. Their cost and efficacy, the fact that they must be kept refrigerated, and their bulk, all mean that in many countries where MSF works, especially sub-Saharan Africa, they are less available to children who are therefore less protected. But the two vaccines have no competition, so their manufacturers have no reason to adapt them to the needs of these children. MSF's Epidemiological Research Centre, Epicentre, has spent years conducting studies on diarrheal diseases in Niger's Maradi region. Using data showing close to one in three children are rotavirus carriers, Epicentre, MSF, Niger's Ministry of Health and the World Health Organization have completed an efficacy trial on BRVPV, a new vaccine produced by the Serum Institute of India. Over 4,000 children took part in phase three of the trial to prove the vaccine's efficacy. The results, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, are conclusive. Firstly, the vaccine is safe and effective in over 66% of cases. This is far better than the results obtained by the existing vaccines in the same region. Secondly, it is heat stable. Contrary to many vaccines, it doesn't need to be maintained at a temperature between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius, as it remains effective for up to 6 months at 40 degrees Celsius and up to a year at 37 degrees Celsius. So it's suitable for use in remote areas where it can be extremely challenging to maintain the cold chain. Thirdly, it costs less than the existing vaccines, so the poorest countries will be able to purchase it without having to depend on subsidies that may not last forever. The vaccine is licensed in India and has been submitted to the World Health Organization for pre-qualification. This is critical as it means the vaccine can be purchased for use in vaccination programs. As soon as it is pre-qualified, it can be rolled out and used widely. Beyond the immediate impact BRVPV will have for millions of children, its success proves that it's possible to develop a vaccine specifically adapted for use in developing countries. When they started this killing in the night, you find somebody has been abducted, somebody is being attacked on the way. Uh, maybe somebody is trying to travel and they are being attacked by gun gunmen. People started getting worried. Myself, I was so worried because where I was living, the area alone is risky. You can't stay until 
eight outside. You have to be home by seven. So we started getting worried of those things that were happening. Killings in the night, people come to attack you at your door. This is my second time to be a refugee. I was first a refugee in Uganda when I was a child. That was in 92, 1992. So when I arrived, I felt like this is the same life, but I was a bit worried because that time uh, the life was hard. Most of my relatives are struggling to come, but they cannot make it. But others are still on the way. As I talk, they are trying to reach Uganda through Congo. So when I see that misery, I, I know that things are still not going to be okay. Me, Susan, to be honest, I will wish to go to South Sudan when there's peace. So I will go to South Sudan when I see that my future is going to be bright. When there are schools and when I see that everybody is going to school and I'm able also to go to school, I'll go to South Sudan.